Hey there, Chris Courtney here for New Pragmatic. Thanks for joining me for this short video where we're going to look at some different ways to remove backgrounds from the images that we use while still working inside of Figma. Now, I'm not going to judge you on why you might be wanting to remove the background from an image that you're using. There's a thousand reasons why you might want to do that. Some of them are very valid. Some of them probably suck. But overall, it's something that you should be able to do. And, you know, in the past, we would just, you know, pop in, uh, pop open the creative Death Star and, and start up Photoshop. But not everybody has access to Adobe Creative Suite, nor do you want to install that piece of software on your device or maybe for whatever reason you can't install it. So most of us have access to Figma. And the question that often comes up from my students is, hey, can I even do this? inside of Figma because we think of it as like a prototyping tool, but in fact, you can actually do that. Looking at the photos that are on screen right now, this is a pretty good candidate to remove the background. And there's actually a plugin that we can just pull right on in and do the job for us. So all you have to do to use this plugin, obviously you need to install it. I'm gonna show you where it's at. So there's a plugin called Remove Background. As you can see, I have it installed. And it does a pretty good job on certain types of images. And we'll take a look at that. But I've already got the Remove Background plugin installer, Remove BG. You do need to go and set up an account at remove.bg. You'll get a key to put into your plugin. Right now, let's go back to the photo of the birds. And all you need to do to activate this is come down here to plugins and as you can see I've got a lot of plugins installed here but we're going to come down here to remove BG and we're going to run it and just like that the background is gone there is no there's no artifact of the background being there and as you can see it's pretty clean all the way through that background is gone now one thing that I'll say about using remove BG is that as you zoom in you can see the quality is it's now become pixelated if you if we were to back this up and look at the picture quality before so i'm going to command z you can see that the picture quality was okay but it, it degraded quite a bit when it went through remove bg so i want you to think about what it, what type of usage scenario do you have for your usage of remove bg if you're going to use this pretty small like if these birds are going to be used at half the size of the image that you pulled in then this is probably fine you know it you know you could probably come on down and um you could even crop it further if you want it to i'm going to bring my tools back in here i'm going to say crop and maybe we just take that top bird out and now we could maybe it's on a background you know be we'll make it like a Make it like a sky blue or something. Put that into the background. Maybe that's something, you know, maybe, uh, that's kind of cool with the bird going off the edge. Kind of like that. But, you know, I'm not using it big. I'm using it in subtle areas. I'm trying to at least. Um, so sometimes remove BG works pretty well for you. And then there's the drunk frogs here. Let's do the same thing here and take a look at what remove BG does to it. It's just not a great image for remove BG to be effective with. It leaves behind the flowers. It can't figure out what I'm wanting and what I'm not wanting. You know, like this is this is a pretty rough cutout. I, I would I would expect better from a from a professional designer like yourselves. Um, and also, I look at these flowers. These are pretty rough, but depth of field on a photo is really important. And if you look here on the face of the frog, oh, he's had too much to drink. The face of the frog is really crisp. The background here is blown out, of course, because that's far away. But also the foreground is beginning to get a bit fuzzy. And when you have, when the subject matter of the cutout, it goes from sharp to fuzzy in such a small space. That means the depth of field is really hard to work with. You're going to have to make some, some guesses and then it's, this is this part's still going to be blurry, all right? So there's just certain images, you know. Even you can even see here on the, on the belly that's super soft. The focus is really right here, and you know what's funny is like you look at this face, 
And then the feet. The feet are clearly, clearly blurry. And this one holds together pretty well. So if anything, if I was to come through and say, well, I'll, I'll just mask this. I'll zoom back out. I'm going to flip the order because to mask something, you need to have the order change. So now I've got the mask behind it. I'll select these. I'll use the little moon tool at the top to make a mask. Um, he's in a little box and that's great. I've made a mugshot out of him. It, I'm, that's not a cutout. I haven't removed the background. I've just kind of cropped it. So let's go over here. This is another, this is another situation where we might be able to use remove background. As you can see, I've got the skyline. Let's go ahead and try to re use remove background here. Couple problems. One, it doesn't know what to do with the blue because I think it's picking up the blue of the sky off of this building and then it's associating it for some reason through here. Now that's kind of cool as a piece of artwork, but it doesn't work so well as a cutout. So that's the first problem. The second problem is like if we need, if we wanted to go in here and get the Trans America Pyramid, it's not, it's not like I can get the entire building and that's a problem. There are certain images that you shouldn't cut out so here, if I was, if I said, well, I want the Trans America building, this would be a poor quality choice for doing that. And remove BG is basically useless to you. Could we use the pin tool for this? And the answer is yes. So provided that you have an image where everything is relatively sharp and the subject matter that you're trying to cut out isn't obstructed like it is in this case. That brings me up over here to our little bird. And our bird is a magnificently sharp, sharp picture. Um, almost feels painted to some degree. Of course, when you're zoomed in on it, um, it's going to have that quality. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my tools here so we can take a look at it. There is some obstruction here of the tail, but I could actually, I could actually make a case where I could probably carve around that if I need it to. Um, the feet are going into the side of the log. Um, now that's, that's going to be a bit more difficult. But if I look at this and I say, you know, what I really want is I want the log and the bird. I want that together because I'm going to do something nature-y with it. Um, so I want all of this that's in the foreground. Well, that makes me think, okay, so is, is, this, is this something I can use remove background? Because it, it's pretty clear there's a foreground and a background here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. So let's go to the plugin, run, and it throws back this. There was an error, error reading the image. Some images are just too complex for remove background to be efficient. So that's where we go and we pull in the pen tool. The pen tool is right up here in your, your nav bar at the very top. And when we select that, it's I'm just gonna, you know, I could have just hit P to switch to that tool but I'm just gonna select it. And when I begin to make my my custom uh, shapes with the pen tool, I really zoom in here as close as I can get to the subject. And it's gonna look like everything's pixelated. I'm not ever going to zoom in this closely when I'm actually using the image, but I get this close when I'm trying to cut something out or I'm trying to draw something. So I'm gonna speed up the video, but you're gonna get a, get a sense of what it's like to, to cut this shape out.
Okay, so we cleaned up our vector and I, I went ahead and did a couple other things that we're going to need to do for this to really work. Because as you'll note, as I was going around the edges of this, we have some spots that I didn't quite address. Namely right down here where the, the claw of the bird connects on with the log and where the body connects back with the log. And then there were a couple of other spots where there may be twigs or other overlaps. So here's our vector. To make a mask, we need to fill it, all right? So we need to have a fill on the mask that we made. But in our case, we also have this unique aspect of this that says we need to also remove things from this mask. So what we're going to first do is we're going to go ahead and subtract selections from the mask. As you can see right away, when I hit subtract selection, we now have a hole in the mask where I can clearly see through and I can kind of see a little bit of the bird, but that's okay. The next one is here on vector two. I'm going to go ahead and move that up. One thing that I found to be helpful is to go ahead and flatten the image as I make these moves um, because I, I want this to be considered one image together or one mask. So I'll flatten that and now I will subtract these away. And as you can see, I've now made another, I poked another hole in that larger mask. And then finally, we'll do that again. We'll flatten it. And it's important to note how this is happening. The item that I'm subtracting is on top of the actual mask that's below. It's called subtract right now, but we'll rename that in just a moment. So I'm going to now do the same thing, subtract selection, and now we have the hole again. I don't really want the stroke that's been applied. And just for our sake of seeing it, I'm gonna turn it bright red. And now we can see, now we get to see the actual full mask with the, with the, air, with the shapes removed from inside, but we can still see the background here. A very important tip as you're going through and doing a big mask like this, lock the image down. The last thing you want to do is accidentally move the image. Now I can un undo that, but if I accidentally move the image as I was going around, it could create havoc later. The next piece of this puzzle is super important. You need to move the image in front of the item that you're going to be masking it with. So our, our mask here called subtract, I'm gonna call this main mask. You can rename that all you want. But this shape is called main mask now. I'm going to grab both of these items and then I'm simply going to hit the mask tool. And now, if you zoom in, I've got a high quality bird. It's a high quality bird, but it's also a high quality image of the bird. But I've got a high quality image of the bird with a pretty solid cutout of the bird. And I could, you know, I can go in here and I've got some other at little attributes here as well, but I have none of the pixelization I was getting with removed background. And I can really do anything I want to with this because these items are now grouped together in Figma. I hope this short video on creating custom masks using the pen tool in Figma has been helpful. And really, the whole video was about removing backgrounds from images. A lot of the tips that I, I've given here while I've been working inside of Figma, you can really apply them to any program that you might be using to remove a background with. Just remember, you need a quality image that has an unobstructed subject matter. So whatever it is, you need to be able to get the whole thing. And then you also need to make sure that everything that's being cut out is at, the, at a similar focal depth. That way you don't have fuzzy parts in one area and sharp parts in another. If you found this video helpful, please click that subscribe button. And if you're looking for design mentorship, look no further. New Pragmatic is where you wanna be. I tell people all the time, if you're looking for a design mentor, then you should definitely work with Chris. You gotta 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 work with Chris. If you're thinking about joining the program or working with Chris, don't hesitate, reach out and sign up. Reach out today to find out about our monthly mentorship packages.